Right, so I'd just like to hand over uh, to two, Tim Brooks to talk about the training uh, and customization they've been putting together. Yeah, thanks. As uh, Lee mentioned, we're just going to have a look at some of the new standard files and some of the new training that we're going to have with version 11. In version 10 and previous, you've always been able to open 12D model out of the box. It's just worked and you didn't have to customise it at all. This is because 12D is shipped with its standard and standard files and library files. So it will just work to some capability. Uh, and whilst this worked, it wasn't always an ideal solution. So setup files were there, were in there for something to work. But there were bits and pieces added over the years and with no real distinction between different disciplines and of course redundant files being left in the library area as well. So not really an issue for those using authority standards, but for those companies working outside those parameters or companies internationally, it wasn't the best working solution for them and it certainly wasn't the best example on how to use these files. So why now? We started to look at updating our public training courses for version 11 and as part of this it was decided that to get the best out of training we needed to provide a solid foundation when it came to the standard files. Uh, we wanted to show the benefits of the new version 11 features like easier navigation, snippet libraries and uh, standardised plotting support from the install. Anyway, for a while there I thought we bit off more than we could chew. <laughs> but we're just about there. So what's different? First things first, a clean up. We got rid of all the unused stuff. This should help with the install size. Well, a, li a little bit. Then we got all our trainers together from, from the different states and different countries and put our collective, item, collective ideas together to form new and update the standard files. Cage matches were avoided. So let's have a look at a few of the major changes. The names.4D or the names file is the backbone to any good standard. This is one that came with the earlier versions. This old one is it's not very comprehensive and there's no real distinction between the disciplines. Not to mention it had missing comments. It was a bit of a bitzer. So with the new one, we formed a more comprehensive names list. So if there's anything missing, feel free to contact us. We'll look at putting it in. Yeah, so we, we created more of an extensive names list. So if we have a look at that, we, we've got quite a list of names that should cover everything in design and survey. The next issue we had was whether to create two names files, one for, say, survey and one for design. This wasn't really practical when it came to training and or for you guys, so it spawned the group's idea. You would have seen that this morning in, in Lee's talk. And so this is what it will look like now. And you can use subgroups in those groups as well. So if you want survey and or design. They're all in the one. This will avoid the, the necessary change of pointing your environment file to a different names file. So a particular benefit for those companies out there that have the multiple, multiple disciplines, uh, you should see the benefits there. Uh, also, with some of the new changes, we wanted to be able to identify string names easier. So we've set it so that when you activate your data tooltip, 
the comment will also display as part of that as well. So you can identify what the string code means there. So let's go and have a look at the names.4D file and see what, how it's actually, what, what's actually new in there. Basic tabs pretty much as it was before, except for the groups column, which is located there. And it groups is simply done by typing in the text that you want to create the group name with. If you want a subgroup, just separating it with the backslash. Very easy to do. Other new features inside the names.4D file, as mentioned previously, is the pipe area. So we've provided some examples there and also the attribute area as well. So to see how these might work, if I wanted to draw a stormwater pipe, and I wanted it to be a 600 diameter. I could enter at that stage there. You'll see in the pipe control bar, it's filled out the diameter and the invert. Also, if I wanted to apply an attribute to that, so it wanted it to be uh, a reinforced concrete pipe, I could put the RCP on the end, hit enter. Now when I draw a string, zoom in, You'll see the diameter is automatically there, but also if I do an F8 and pick it, the uh, attribute is also attached as in material type. So some nice new features there and examples on how to use it. And the colors.4D file, you're all familiar with the standard 16 color list. You've all would have seen that before. And on the right there is the old visual, the viz colors from version 10. For version 11, this has been modified somewhat. So if we have a look at the colors list now, the standard 16 colors, we've added a few, a few grays to it, a few shade colors, and a number of the different pen colors there as well. So for those that plot directly from 12D, this should be of uh, particular benefit for you as well. The visualization colors have now been prefixed with viz. This will allow the, the search capability to work better or the control D. So to demo that, that's just if you want any viz color, you can enter it in there, hit control D, and it'll bring up that list immediately. So they're not all scattered throughout the list there anymore. For those that also use the visualization colors, you'll notice there's a few extra ones there. And this is to match the textures.4D file now. So for those who are concerned that we're renaming some of the colors, and you may be wondering how this will affect some of your existing tools, also in the colors.4D file now, legacy name column has been added. So what we've done is where our visualization colors are, we have our new color name, but we also have the old one there. So any of your existing macros or any references to those old viz colors should still work. Line styles and symbols.4D files, these are what the old ones used to look like. Uh, they weren't organized as such, and they were very, very long in length. Okay. So we've taken a look at those as well. So back to 12D. And this is what they will look like now. As you see, they've been organized. Uh, the groups have also used in these areas. Uh, we prefixed our line styles with 12D. Everything except the bottom two, that's not ours. And also subgroups can be found under those as well. So if I wanted a survey line type, I could go to that particular area and pick a line type there. 
easy to find, particularly if you want a utility line type, you know, they just search under each one of their subgroups. When you add your own line styles and symbols.4d file, you'll be able to clearly identify which ones are yours now and or if you add your authorities line styles as well. So for example, in this one I've added the TMR uh, line styles and symbols into this setup. TMR is the standard authority here in Queensland. So I can clearly identify which ones belong to them and if I wanted survey line type Again, making use of the subgroups to select the line type from whichever field I need to. The alignment styles have had some work done to them as well, including there's a few more examples in there. The symbols and text inside these have now been created using paper scale, not world scale. This will allow you to do scaling within 12D itself. Also making use of some of the newer features like labeling the alignments and an actual error message uh, when you get an error in your elements, not that old uh, n slash a or non-applicable error. The toolbars.4d file uh, has had some new toolbars added to it and some existing ones have been modified. So the new ones include, but not limited to, the attributes, there's a CAD dimension and leader, components and an explorer toolbar. The explorer toolbar has been quite popular so we're looking to add that one as the standard workspace so you can open not only your working folder in Explorer directly, but it also opens to your user folder, user libraries, all that sort of thing as well. So that one will be there. Other ones include a new label, measure, a models add and remove, project management, sharing, a spreadsheet to drainage, survey, text, two flow, volumes, and a zoom toolbar. Modified toolbars include the delete, drainage and the options toolbar. So lots of them there for you to go and explore. Other updates include there's been some additional fonts and textiles have been added. The defaults have had a few minor changes including corner angle is now a standard default or included as a standard default and also as a standard default the colours list has been set to 90. So given the pop-up order of the colours.4D, this will display not only the standard 12D colours, but the visualisation colours as well, just as you've seen it before. There are a number of drainage.4D files that have been revised and included now, so that should give you some better examples there. And I'm not going to go into plotting in too much detail as Owen's going to go through these features tomorrow. But just to let you know, there's all new pen mapping and export features that will be available. Some of you may have seen these, best way to describe these, uh, beautiful long and cross section example PPFs. Well, they're gone now, so they've been replaced with some more realistic versions. So whilst we're not going to pretend that you should use these files with 12D model, as mentioned, if you don't have an authority standard to follow, like those from overseas, we hope these provide, provide you with a better solution. So, and for companies that wish to have their own standard, you can either use the files straight out of the box now or use them as a base to develop your own. For those companies that already have customised setups, uh, perhaps you just use them as an example on how to use the new features in version 11. So as I mentioned before, some, one of the reasons we decided to do this was to improve our standard public training courses.
public training and our in-house training courses. So for those who have attended one of these, you may be familiar with the following data set. It's the Barwon data set. It's an old faithful. Well, Barwon will be retired as we seek a new direction in training. Having said that, the Barwon data set will still be the base for the Getting Started manual. Obviously, for version 11, we have a new survey project to form the base of our data set. We're calling it EMU Park, and this will cater for our different survey courses. And on top of that, we'll be able to add our drainage, design, sewer, visualisation, and in future, the rail courses. The new training won't just be a different data set. It will be now made up of modules, an idea that came from our Kiwi branch. So whilst the public courses will still be run on a single or two-day course, they'll consist of these modules. This means for those that wish to have an in-house course, you, you now have the option to customise it. So, for example, if you want the intermediate road design course, but you wish to change one or two things, you can select from the modular list to personalise that course for your office. Another benefit to modular courses is the ability to hold online training. This won't be full courses, uh, but more targeted training. So, for example, if you wish to just learn more about boxing or super alignment features or chains. You can look up when a course is being held, register, you'll be provided with a login, and as long as you've got a, a good internet connection, you can log in and be trained from anywhere in the world. This type of training will only be a, over an hour or two, and if it's and more likely only an hour each day. So if it's a two hour course, it might be an hour today and an hour tomorrow. So this will minimise the time out of your work environment and or you can just log in and do them in a lunch hour. Also reduces the need to travel as mentioned before. So you can just log in anywhere and do your training. So stay tuned for when this will be available. And uh, thank you.